says, fuck it, Killy Smith. Oh, my God, again, it did it. <laughs> <laughs> Every show with that. With that. Hey, Killy, if you do ever watch or anything, I'm not actually meaning to say that. It's a joke, and for some reason, it just comes live on every one of our videos. That's how we get started. Thank you for joining us, everybody, <laughs> except for Achilles, I guess. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, we appreciate you guys checking in. Obviously, we're going to go into our intro pretty quick because we got a lot of stuff to get to, even though we don't really have a lot of stuff to get to. And uh, let's kick things off with the video. Jordan. Oh, a spectacular move by Michael Jordan. Drives one out to deep left field. This one's got a chance to get out of here. Go! Jimmy Jack first big league home run for Mike Trout. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. And an 81 point game, 55 in the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed the second greatest scoring performance in NBA history. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Infinity Sports. Not that anyone really cares what my wife thinks, but my wife does not like how the video intro ends so abruptly. She would rather it just faded. And I'm like, well, it's a video intro, so it's kind of like we can't talk over it. So it just how can it fade? It's a video. I'm confused. Yeah, I don't know. She wanted it to kind of fade into us talking. Like the music continues after the. Uh, no, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. Whatever. So anyway, she's not <laughs> putting the video together. So. <laughs> Again, thank you for joining us. Uh, it is Infinity Sports. You are watching us live on Facebook Live, either on our Infinity Sports page, the RTF page, our personal pages. Maybe you're watching us live on YouTube, on the RTF YouTube page, or the Infinity Sports YouTube channel. Lots of places to find us live. Lots. If for whatever reason you miss out on some of the episodes, because they do run a little long sometimes, or maybe you jump in a little bit late. We are available on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can get the entire episode with no commercials and no interruptions. We do rebroadcast every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. on the RTF Sports Network, but it is a one-hour broadcast. So if the episode runs long, it will get cut off, which is why those other options are there for you, even the video. I encourage people to go to the videos because we have so many visual cues and things and the comments popping up. We have to tell people what they say. Just watch the video. Don't just download it or listen to it. Plus, I'm great looking, so you get to watch me. Yeah, there you go. It's like a double yeah. benefit. It's like a double double whammy. And also, Wait, that was wanna... a bad thing back in the day. Double whammy. So never mind. It's not a double whammy. Well, if you're playing <laughs> press your luck, I guess. Yeah, great game. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you are uh, want to interact with us, Infinity Sports Podcast on Facebook at Infinity Sports Podcast on Instagram and at Sports Infinity Five on Twitter. You can also visit the website. That's the easiest thing to do www.infinitysportspodcast.com. It will take you to all of those. There will be logos at the top of every page. You can just click on that. It takes you to our social media page. There's a logo for the YouTube. You can just click on that. Plus, we have a store. So if you want to support the show, pick up some Infinity Sports gear. Pick up some 12 is greater than 9 gear. Visit the Sully Collection. We have Gold Jacket, Green Jacket. Who gives a shit? We're going to have more sayings as the show continues to grow. We are. You know, they, I, they're just naturally going to come out. You know what I mean? It just happens. For sure. And sure. now some pre-news news before we get into the news news is those of you who follow the RTF Sports Network and uh, watch, you know, all the different shows, which we appreciate. We do appreciate you guys following us. The RTF Sports Network is actually going to be rebranding, and it's no longer going to be the RTF Sports <laughs> Network. It's going to be All Access Sports. Jazz Fingers. Uh, yeah, Jazz which I think is actually a kind of a cool name. I all do. Access I like Sports. the name. I like the name. I do like it better. So yeah. and That's credit to Mike Reeves. He came up with that. He also is doing the artwork, which I say much to my chagrin because I'm a pretty good <laughs> graphic design guy myself. Uh, I, I, I agree. All- yeah. I do all the logos for us. I do all of the uh, the little things that pop up, um, and that's okay. Like, hey, give me a shot, and let's. I thought we should have a fan vote to determine what our all access logo looks like, just to get people involved. Actually, that's a great idea. I mean, it really would inspire people. You know, I feel, you know, we don't get a ton of you know viewing on RTF, and and we're trying to increase that. Hence the rebrand and things like that. So I think you're right. I think your idea of allowing the fans to interact would be a great idea. Um, you know, and, and hopefully they kind of get, they put that in there. That'd be really nice. I know Mike Reeves is great at what he does. You know, Twist is a fantastic show. Um, it's almost as good as Infinity Sports. So, you know, I, I get, I get it. They got to give him a shot, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, 
<laughs> All right, so that said, that's what's going to happen. We'll keep everybody posted. We'll have new graphics and new logos. Uh, it kind of, it's, I'm so happy I spent money on this backdrop here that has RTF all over it. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep running with that. Yeah, uh, just, just put tape, blue tape, and just yeah. put, you know, they can say one blue and yellow. But in the meantime, it is time for the news. So there we are. We have our news music two weeks in a or two weeks, two episodes in a row where I don't mess it up. Well, you know, except for the two weeks thing. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. And uh, starting off the news, I wanted to have a video thing for the news because I've been trying to do more videos, more overlays to try to give people some visual incentive to continue watching. This one's for you, Sully. So let's lead off the news with this video. Tyler Johnson stops up at center, hits the trailer, Hedman, great pass to Shattenkirk, and he's in, and on a swivel in front of the net, Gord shoots, he scores. Kirk strips the puck, now you move up, does another good job, he got his head up the whole way, and there's just way too much ice, way too much. Should just about do it, Devontae backs up into his own zone, Andy Green and Devontae just kill the final couple of seconds. It started with a Braden Point goal. 114 of the first period, and the onslaught did not stop. <laughs> he said two. The onslaught did not stop is right. Uh, he mentioned we scored in a minute and 14 seconds, and we just kept pounding those boys. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a long series for the Islanders. Uh, or a short series, I guess. Well, yeah, I, it, it's going to be a short series, but it's going to be a rough one. I, I just I, I mentioned in, in at Triple Shot Sports last night when I guessed for them, they, they they're just one of those teams that, Brandon actually made a great analogy. They're the 12 seed that beat the couple teams in the first couple rounds, and now they're in the final four facing the one seed, and they're showing their 12 seed. Now, I know Brandon mentioned it in Triple Shot Sports last night. Actually, I have a comment. I wonder if it's from them because they'd like to be the first ones on. I know we actually have one of our bloggers, uh, Mike Fink. Uh, once we rebrand, can I get all of the free hoodies, T-shirts, and hats <laughs> with the custom logo? I'm here for the free stuff. Um well, there is no RTF logo, I think, on our stuff. On our stuff, yeah. Just the Infinity Sports logo, so that's not changing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that ain't changing. We ain't rebranding that. So, yeah, I know on Triple Shot Sports they had asked about the Dallas Stars, and they said the Stars just seem like that team of destiny, right? Um, they're going to meet. I mean, if they meet in the finals, I know you'd said it's not going to be a 4-0, 4-1, as good as the Lightning is playing, and even though they, they could potentially get Hedman back, but I mean, what is your prediction on the Stars? Well, they would get Stamkos back, not Hedman, but yeah. Um, I, I, honestly, I'm not sure the Stars are going to get through the through the Knights. I know they said they're the darlings, but the Knights put a hurt on them last night, 3-0. Um, Lanier had his, I think, fifth shutout of the playoffs. I mean, he's just playing bonkers. Uh, I fully expect Vegas to go through. Um, it'd be pretty, pretty magical if Dallas went through, but I expect Vegas to go through. And, and honestly, whatever team goes through, I expect Tampa to go through to go on and win. That's not just being the homer. Uh, I just think we're better at all spots. I think Vasilevsky is better than Lanier, although that's very, very close. I will give it that. But our, our defense is just, I mean, far and away better, I think. And then our scoring ability is second to none. So I, I really think we don't really stand, don't have much of a challenge. But obviously the playoffs, you never know. So Now I know that last night they did give you a little bit of grief for saying we and yes. talking about the team. And yes. I know it was actually Chad, a.k.a. Soup Boss, who gave you crap about it. And, and he should know better because he's a Patriots fan. And as a Patriots fan, we say we <laughs> because we get crapped on just as much as the team does for supporting the team. So it's like we're all in this together. you know. So that's why. Exactly. I've been a Tampa Bay Rays fan since 98. You know, I've got it tattooed on my leg. I'm allowed to say we. I've been there when we had. 20 fans in the stadiums and we're winning, we're losing 90 games and I've been there. We're winning 98 and we're a great team. So I'm, I'm invested at this point. I'm going to say we, <laughs> I think it's pretty good to say we. yeah, me too. Um, now with hockey out of the way, that was the big hockey story. Uh, actually, <laughs> that was was big about hockey about. news. <laughs> Although you said that the, the Knights winning three zero, I didn't have that. I didn't have a graphic yeah. for that. Um, Knights won three zero last night. Yeah. But they were shut out the first game. You said that the first game was kind of a really good back and forth. Nobody really had the advantage. It just came down to one goal. Yeah. This 
three zero game was it the Knights just dominating them? Yeah, Vegas came out and essentially played their their brand of hockey and and put it put it to Dallas. Uh, this is kind of how I expect the series to go. I've said it ad nauseum. I've said it a lot. Dallas doesn't score goals. They were twenty ninth out of thirty or twenty eighth out of thirty one teams in scoring, and uh, you know they're just built on defense and. It's just a tough matchup for him with Vegas. I just don't see it happening. All right. Now, NBA news. This is really more my forte. We've got the Lakers beat the Rockets 112-102. That gives them a 2-1 series lead. LeBron James, 38-7-5, just doing what LeBron does. <laughs> Anthony Davis, 26-15-6. Rajon Rondo, we'll talk about that, 21-2-9. Harden and Westbrook do their thing as well, but you know Jeff Green's your third guy at 16 points. It just didn't have enough. And that game was tied going into the fourth quarter, and then the Lakers just kind of ran away with it. I mean, the Lakers were losing for most of the game. I, I mean, they, I mean, James Harden and Russell Westbrook were doing their thing. Their complimentary players were playing well. But, you know, the fourth quarter rolls around, and LeBron and that team take over. Rajon Rondo had, I think, 12 of his 20 in the fourth quarter. I mean, he played out of his mind. He, I mean, when Rajon Rondo is hitting threes, I mean, there's just not much you can do because you can't. You you're not going to guard that. He's not a three point shooter. So, I, I saw an interesting stat: Anthony Davis and LeBron James are, I think it was forty and one or fifty and one when they score over sixty points combined. Huh. Yeah. Well, LeBron also games. had LeBron also almost. I know you hate like baseball stats, but he almost had like the fabled uh, thirty ten five and five. He missed the the uh, blocks by one. Oh yeah, I've never heard of that fable. Well, I mean, it's like it's like a t- you know, it's it. Uh, what's his name was the I think the only one to do it uh, since like nineteen or like since like two. Hakeem Olajuwon is like the last one to do it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't. If it's not double digits, I don't. I don't really. No, care. I agree. But you know, it's that five mark too, because getting five blocks and five steals and shit is hard, man. And we talked about it. Uh, a show ago basically i said are the lakers going to do what they did to the blazers which is just lose that first one and then just steamroll through well like you said this is the one they were losing the whole game but they still managed to win it they come out now it's two to one so the same thing could happen next game they're losing the whole game fourth quarter rolls around now it's three to one so we're still thinking it's going to be a four one series or the rockets aren't going to take another one i don't think so Uh, i think it's done i mean like you said james harden played exceptionally well russell westbrook actually shot the ball well and played pretty decent jeff green's you know, giving you 16 points. I mean, you can't ask much more from Jeff Green. I mean, when you do everything right, like Houston did, and you still lost, I, I mean, that's got to be a little deflating. I think they've just figured out the small lineup, plain and simple. Well, the other NBA action that we saw is the Miami Heat closing out that series, putting the Bucks out of their misery, 103-94. Jimmy Butler, 17-10-6. and Dragic, 17-4-2. and Nobody really had an outstanding game, but they had six players that scored 12 or more points. The Bucks were without Giannis. So Middleton tried his best to carry the team, but he, he didn't have the MVP of the league. Well, and he's only Chris Middleton. Like, let's be real. He's a third-tier, fourth-tier player at best. You know what I mean? I don't see – like we talked about it last – or on Monday, I don't see him as a superstar. Do you? Nope. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I mean, I just don't – That that's shocking to me, though. I mean, they had Giannis, who's the defensive player of the year – plus first-team all-defense. Eric Bledsoe, who I know you love, you've sang his praise, made second-team all-defense. Uh, Brooke Lopez made second-team all-defense. And this team's getting whomped by by Miami. And, I mean, it's it's the depth. It's like you mentioned. They Nobody really did great. They had, what was it, eight guys? Was it six guys scoring double figures? I mean, that's wild. I mean, it's just wild. Well, and it's a testament to the same reason I had the Boston Celtics as the number one overall seed going into the playoffs is that Brad Stevens coaching is second to only Popovich and Popovich wasn't in the playoffs. So he's the best coach in the playoffs. The second best coach in the playoffs, I think, is Eric Spolstra. And I think that he's the guy who doesn't get a lot of credit because he had LeBron and Wade and Bosh and people are like, oh, he won because he had those superstars. But I've been saying it even when LeBron was there. I was like, he is a really good coach. And there's a reason that when LeBron was butting heads with him and wanted a different coach, that Pi, uh, Pat Riley said, no, pound sand, get out of here. Eric yeah. was a coach. Kick rocks, bro, yeah. Uh, I mean, I agree. I, I, I've always think, thought thought very highly of Eric Spolstra. Anytime you have to manage that kind of personalities and that many, like, superstars, I think you're, you know, you're a great coach. That's the, you know, Phil Jackson, you know, uh, professors. When, I, when, when was it? 
Damn, I'm trying to remember his nickname, but I can't for the life of me. Oh, the Zen uh, Master. Zen Master, there you go. You know, it's like that Zen Master quality to just kind of keep everybody together. And granted, you know, LeBron kind of got tired of it, but LeBron gets tired of everybody, let's be real. So, well, one of the reasons I think Spolster showed how good of a coach he is here is because we've talked before, especially with Coach Fields, about how there's two different types of coaching, right? There's coaching personalities, which Phil Jackson did as good as anybody. And then there's coaching X's and O's, which Brad Stevens does really well. And you get to see that when you don't have giant personalities on a team. Yeah. Well, we've seen Spolstra win championships with giant personalities. And now we're seeing him with no personalities. I mean, Jimmy Butler, I guess you could Jimmy say. But, pretty big per- but not in the same light. I get what yeah. you mean. You're seeing his X's and O's abilities now, and it's, and it's shining through. So he's actually – he can coach any type of team. That's what makes him so good. And I feel the same way with Brad Stevens. He can coach any type of team. No, I agree. I, I- – I think I'd feel more comfortable with Brad Stevens coaching any type of team, but yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I do think Eric Spolstra is, you know, going to have an issue here, you know, in the East when, you know, he comes up to, uh, Jesus. Um, fuck, why am I blanking today? Yeah, Boston? Yes, Jesus. Uh, when they come up to face the Celtics, I, I can't, I'm sorry, guys, I'm, I was totally blanking. Uh, to come up to face the Celtics, because it looks like they are going to go through uh, in six here. I, I got them winning for sure. So, I mean, I don't see the heat. I mean, do you think they last six against the Celtics or Toronto? Do you think they even stand a chance? Um, well, first of all, it's not Celtics or Toronto, and we'll touch on that in a second. And uh, I'm just it, saying it could be either at this point. I agree you don't think so, but it could be either. Um, but no, I, I think that six would be good. If they could last six, there's no way they're going to win it. But if they could last six, that's almost like a moral victory uh, at this point. And speaking of the Celtics, <laughs> the Raptors 111-89, a absolute smackdown of the Raptors. And this comes off of the Raptors winning two in a row. And I would said to you, remember I said they're going to win the next two games, period. It's still going to be 4-2. It does not go seven games. The Raptors are not better than the Celtics. The best team, the best coach team is going to win the series 4-2. to two. And I still, after seeing this beat down, a 22-point victory, do you think the Raptors can still make it a seven-game series? I mean, I'm not going to count them out, but if I'm a betting man, which I am, I'm not betting Toronto. That's for sure. Um, it, it looks like Toronto's done. Um, you never know, though. They do have that championship caliber, and, and they still may have that fire, but I just don't see it. Um, I don't think they can they can score with, with Boston, and, and obviously Boston can defend with them. So, Well, again, you know, I'll bring the graphic up again because we've got some uh, numbers here. I mean, Fred Van Vliet, 18-2-5. Norman Powell, 16-1-3. Those are your top two scorers. Now look at the Celtics. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kemba Walker, I mean, Kemba Walker, those three guys are better than any player on Toronto. No. Pascal Siakam is better than Kemba Walker. Oh, no way. No. Yes, he is. Yes, no. he is. Yes. He, is, he yes. doesn't have an outside game. It doesn't matter. He's 6'10". What do, you, what do you need an outside game for? I'm just saying. All I, Kemba still, Walker doesn't have the inside game that Pascal Siakam has because he's That's not true. Right. He gets to the rim as good as Kyrie Irving does. Yeah, but he can't back down a player and fucking own in the paint like Pascal Siakam can. Pascal Siakam I just, doesn't back people down. He slashes the hoop. He plays like Giannis. Yeah, I mean, but he can is what I'm saying. Ah, you can, I'm done with this. You're yeah, you're such fine. a homer. You fucking yeah, dick. I don't even like the Celtics. I, I know. That's, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think Kemba's playing better basketball, but overall, I think Pascal's the better player. I mean, I, I don't know. I just think his game's just bigger. I don't know. I think he had a great – season and he looked really good last year's playoffs he's a good defender i think his game is still very rough and needs lots of polish and that's my thing if you polish his game up then maybe i'd say yeah he's better but right now he's just too rough and he's scoring a lot of points on athleticism which is only going to go so far i mean kemba walker's at the point now that his athleticism is starting to fade but he's such a skilled player that he knows how to get his points and I just think that that's why I think Siakam I don't think is as good. I'm not saying he never will be. I think he could no, be. I hear, but I hear you. I understand. Just, just a rough project. I mean, honestly, they probably have the four players who are playing the best in it because I throw Marcus Smart on there too, and he's probably playing better than any player that's playing on Toronto currently. So, I mean, I agree. Well, you know what a big Marcus Smart fan I am because I had said that he was going to guard Giannis, but now that's not going to happen. I mean, I, I, I think if you're not a fan of Marcus Smart, I, I really don't know what you're watching i mean the guy's just the epitome of what you want in a basketball player if you ask me i mean if he was better but you get what i mean 
Now, I was going to say that we only had three basketball games, so I don't have any more graphics. But unfortunately, we did have the Clippers and the Nuggets, <laughs> which nobody cares about. Uh, the Clippers won 113-107. Kawhi Leonard, 23-14-6. and six. Paul George, 32-4-4. Four and four. Clippers, 29-19 uh, in the fourth quarter. So they were losing going into the fourth quarter, and they just uh, beat them in the fourth quarter. Jokic doing what he does. Jamal Murray not having a very good game at all. 14 points. Which should be encouraging for the for the Nuggets. Jamal Murray only scoring 14 and, and you're winning until the fourth quarter should make you feel really good. Because if Jamal Murray scores is 26 like he's supposed to, you win the game. Um, did you see that block Kawhi had with the finger, by the way? I didn't hear. I heard that somebody said like his finger kept growing and growing. <laughs> it, was, it was insane. It's like he went up and... And then his finger just like extended and just one finger blocked the shot. I mean, it was a dunk, but still, uh, it was pretty sick. It was pretty impressive to watch. Now, Kawhi is one of those guys who I did not think was a superstar, like a guy you build around uh, because he's so quiet. You know, he just plays very quietly and he'll get, he's at 23, 14 and six, but you're watching the game and you're not like, wow, he's dominating. It's just, he, at the end of the day, he has a stat and, and he does it every single game. And I, I guess you know, I, I've come around to the point. I do think that he is a superstar you can build around. Um, I don't think Paul George is the best complimentary piece. I mean, you on paper you would think it would fit, but Paul George just isn't the same mentality. Like you know, like you mentioned that uh, Kawhi is just so I think killer instinct, even though he's quiet. You know, I think he has that ability to just take over, and, and I don't see that in Paul. I just see a guy who goes out there and is extremely talented at playing basketball, but doesn't have like the mental side of it. Uh, and Kawhi is just a flat-out superstar, in my opinion. I love Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, I think he's great. I think he would benefit probably more from not so much a wing player because he's a wing player and he is the quintessential wing player. I, I think he would benefit more either from a point guard or a, a big man. And so I, I don't know. I, I don't think Paul George is the right fit, but they're stuck together for at least the next three years, I think. Yeah, I mean, Kawhi and Giannis, I think, would be a pretty ideal fit. I think those two would go great together. Um, but, it, you know, there's no way it'll ever happen. You know, you put you had Adam, Eric Bledsoe to that, and I mean, and then Chris Middleton's the number three like he should be. That's a, I mean, then that team's extremely dangerous. Now, granted, it's all pure fiction. It'll never happen. But Well, you know what team I think, if you add Kawhi Leonard as the glue to becomes championship city, is the 76ers. Uh, yeah, actually, you're probably right. I mean... Yeah. I mean, then you'd have three bona fide studs, too. And then Tobias Harris and what they still always have. So, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Now, that's all the NBA stuff I have. We did have some NFL news, which is some signings. You know, we've got uh, Jalen Ramsey gets the five and one hundred and five million. This is right off the heels of Tredavious White becoming the highest paid cornerback for one day. And then <laughs> DeAndre Hopkins negotiates himself a two year extension for $54.5 million. Um, I know you, you have some stuff on the DeAndre Hopkins thing. On Jalen Ramsey, I think it was kind of like when Davis signed that deal, I think Ramsey was just waiting for yeah. Davis White to finish that deal. Oh, yeah. He 100% was. He was just waiting to set the mark. And then, I mean, I'm sure the Rams were waiting too, so they didn't overpay, you know, or something like that. So they're just waiting for the mark to be set, then they just got to pay a little over. Uh, DeAndre essentially did the same thing. You know, not essentially. He saw what Keenan Allen got and then negotiated from there. Uh, he got the most court, non quarterback money of all time. Uh, own contract, no agent. Negotiated himself, got the most money from a non quarterback ever. Got no franchise tag clause, a no trade clause. All negotiated into his contract by himself. I mean, the guy's just the man. That's so cool to me. Now, my question is with the non-franchise because usually the franchise applies to once the contract's up and then the team wants to decide yeah. what to do to you so basically he has it in his contract saying when my contract is over you cannot franchise me you cannot franchise tag me you either have to resign me or let me walk yeah See, I didn't know you and then they that. also the cheeky part was putting in the no trade clause The cheeky part was putting in the no trade clause, so now they can't even trade him before that if they can't come to agree on terms. So then they can't. Now I agree. I've never heard of that either. But I mean, it's it's got to be language written into the contract that states, "Hey, when the contract is up, you can't you can't tag me." Because I know that 
with the Patriots when they had Darrell Revis, the, the way they got around that, or the way Revis got around being franchised, was having that second-year team option for like $21 million a year, which you knew the Patriots were not going to pick up. But once you decline a team option, you then can't franchise somebody after you do that. So that was his way around the franchise was having that large player option. Um, so I, I was just surprised that it over- Yeah, there's got to be multiple ways, I'm sure. You know, DeAndre Hopkins is a smart guy, you know, um, so I'm sure he, he figured it out. And, you know, good for him. He, he just, If anybody deserves it, it's DeAndre Hopkins, man. Now, getting into some more NFL news, we this is something that has – struck near and dear to my heart because I'm a video gamer and I laugh because we were recently accused of being somewhat racist because of our take on Adrian Peterson. And I don't think this is going to help our case at all, but I feel we have to talk about EA sports Madden uh, WTF is the name of this little picture (laughs) where we have Colin Kaepernick in Madden 17, which is the last time he was in the game. He was a 74 overall in Madden 21. After not playing for three years, he's an 81 overall. So we'll get into like who he's above in a second, but how about just a, a seven-point overall jump without playing a single snap of three years? I mean, I mean, what can you say? It just doesn't make sense. This is so ridiculous. The only thing I can think is, and I don't know the game, I haven't played um, in a very long time. I know they have the Madden, like, build a team online where you get, like, cards and it's, like, players that can be from the past and things like that. Uh, so you can get – and you can get, like, prime years. So you can get, like, you know, like, uh, what year was the Randy Moss? 01, right? So you can get, like, 01 Randy Moss and he'll be 99 everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm assuming this has to be, like, a whatever year that was. I think it was 06 that he went on his run. Uh, and he actually led them like 13 and three and they went to the Super Bowl and he was, he was, that was his best year by far. I mean, he actually played a really had a great year that year. Um, I'm a, I, I can only assume it has to be based off that rating and it's just that card and he's an 81. I don't know if that's like he's in the game and that's his rating. That's fucking laughable. I mean, we all agree that's ridiculous. It is laughable. And my understanding is this, that he's going to be a free agent and he's going to be an 81. Because the cards, if you go back to 07 or 08, whatever it was, like you said, I went back through all the Madden ratings and saw how he progressed and then degressed. And his highest rating ever in Madden was 89. And that was after that Super Bowl run. Yeah. So you would, if he was going to be on the Super Bowl team, then you would make him an 89 because that was that's his rating true. back then. Yeah, that's so true. So he's an 81, which is basically they're saying he's a free agent. And for me, I've complained numerous times about the Madden rating system. Oh, we all so have. True. I mean, yeah. They overrate rookies, and then the other thing that they do is they choose how guys progress from year to year, and they don't allow you to do the same progression on your team. So if I'm playing a franchise with the Cowboys and I've got Dak Prescott, he throws for 5,000 yards, 55 touchdowns, zero interceptions, right? He goes from uh, an 80 overall to an 85 overall. You know, but here's yeah. a guy who sits on his ass for three years <laughs> and goes from a 74 to an 81. To an 81 from somehow – apparently kneeling makes you a great quarterback. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, it's a joke. You know, the guys, like we're going to mention, he's ahead of Kyler Murray, you know, who just came off of – here we go. This is fantastic. Who just came off a fantastic season. You know, he's ahead of Teddy Bridgewater, who just led his team to a 5-0. You know, he's ahead of Derek Carr. I mean, it's just – it's honestly, it's ridiculous and I mean, I just well, and this is while we're still looking at the graphic, this is what I've got to say about it. I love Derek Carr. We talk about his accuracy, seventy percent completion rate, sixty eight percent for Teddy Bridgewater. Now, Kyler Murray, I didn't have his rating up there, so but he's a seventy seven and he had a sixty four percent completion rating thirty seven point three years ago, the very last time that Callan Kaepernick played, he had a fifty nine percent completion ratio uh, completion ratio or whatever it's completion percentage. And he averaged 200 yards per game the last time he played. And he was a 74, and now he's an 81 because he's better than that now, apparently. Kyler Murray is also the most accurate passer from passes 30 or 40 yards downfield, too. little note for you guys. Uh, and somehow he's only a 77. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I agree. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I'd love to see because you know how they have, like, short yard accuracy, long accuracy, short throw power, you know, long throw power, all those things. I would love to see the actual individual statistics and see actually there at that point who he's rated higher. 
because his accuracy better be fucking atrocious. You know what I mean? His his shit better. His throwing stats better be awful, and his running stats better be great. And that's really the only way you can explain it. Right. His running stats have to be good. His throwing on the run, I know, is always a good. Yeah, which is you know, fine. I'm okay with that being good. But like, if his short yard accuracy and his if his long accuracy is like. 80 something or like 70 like that's bad. like it should be a 64 you know what i mean or something like that so I, I don't know it's just it's ridiculous i mean it's clearly pandering yeah it's 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 the worst thing ever and and i got into an argument on facebook with somebody about it and Shocker. i knew i i knew i would <laughs> yeah. uh, because i'd posted uh, of course blasted it all over the the whole ratings thing oh i said that larry bird is coming out of retirement yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so and somebody commented on it, they're like, hey, why is everyone all up in arms about a fake video game creating fake ratings for fake players? It's not reality. So I commented in response. I said, yeah, that's true. You know what? Let's give uh, Johnny Manziel an 86. You know what? Fuck it. Let's give everybody in the game a 99. You know what? This, yeah. you know, why Which does is true. I mean, if you're, exactly. Why does it even matter? If you're going to make guys just off the street at 81, just make everybody an 89 or 99. Fuck it. Just let everybody play. And who gives a shit? Gold jacket, green jacket. Who gives a shit? That's right. Uh, so that that frustrated me as a video game guy because it, only because as a video game guy, I try to build these teams. I like to take a team that's not that great and build them up. And I hate when the the manufacturer of the game just decides, oh, this guy's this rating, this guy's this rating, and, and there's really nothing you can do about it. And it, it's just stupid because you know everyone. I'm curious to see how many YouTube videos come out in the next six months of people using Colin Kaepernick and Madden and like scoring touchdowns and. Oh, yeah, of course. It's just going to be ridiculous. And, I mean, good for them. That's great. I mean, that's fantastic. The funny thing is, is they'd have done the same thing if he was, like, a 74 or 72, like he should have been. You know, I've succeeded in Madden before with a 72 quarterback and had great players around him. And that's the goal is to then build that 72 up to a 90 or something like that. You know, because I'm the same way with, like, you. I like to build a, a shitty team and make them into a perennial, you know, dynasty. Yeah, especially through the draft, like, I love having all the oh, guys. That I, draft I mean, you know, I'm a draft guy, so that's that's my thing. Do you do you cheat when you draft? Or of course. Oh yeah. yeah, of course you have to. What's your yeah. cheating method? So I save before the draft, then draft, then you can go back and see who all the studs are, and then you just go back and redraft and draft all the studs. That's exactly what I do too. Because a lot, of, some of those studs end up in like the fifth or sixth round. Yeah, like the fifth, sixth round. Yeah, and then you just go make sure you grab them in like the third or the fourth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then for scouting too, like a, a lot of times I'll, I'll I'll scout the guys because it'll tell you their potential rating. Like when yeah. they get drafted, you don't get to see their potential rating; you just get to see their overall. Yeah. So what I'll do is the other cheat thing I do is I'll rack up all my scouting points, you know, for the end of the year, and then like I said, I'll save, scout all the players, undo it, restart, scout, yeah, scout all the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> and all I'm scouting is potential. Yeah, of course, just to see what they get to. Uh, and of course, uh, it, we would be remiss if we didn't talk. If we're talking about football, <laughs> football is back tomorrow. Oh God, greatest thing ever! We are going to see the Chiefs and the Texans. Not the greatest thing ever, but it is football. So it I'm could gonna- be. Honestly, I think it's going to be a really good matchup. I mean. I know they lost DeAndre Hopkins, but I still really like this offense in Houston. I still think Deshaun Watson's a top five quarterback or, you know, who I'd build my franchise around as a top five player. And their defense is still pretty legit. Uh, I, I expect a decent game. I mean, I, not a, I mean, I expect a good, I expect the Chiefs to win pretty easily, but I expect it to be a good game. See, I, I don't think it will be. And I, I think the Chiefs are going to win easily. Do you have a prediction for the score? If I was to ask you, what would you think the score be? I would say. 35-24. I've got 30-13. Um, oh, God. I, See, I, man, you like that Chiefs defense, huh? I, well, I don't like the Texans offense. I just don't See, think I, I think I think David Johnson has a decent game. Um, ooh, excuse me. I believe in him. I more so believe Bill O'Brien's going to make sure he makes him good because then he doesn't look so bad. If David Johnson comes out as a, as a Pro Bowl year, then he doesn't look so stupid for trading him for DeAndre Hopkins. So I think that's going to play into it a bit, but we'll see. I mean, I don't expect them to be close. All right, well, I, I think it's going to be a, a blowout by the Chiefs. I just think that Patrick Mahomes is going to show why he got paid what he got paid. He's going to be slinging the ball over the field. and just I mean, Deshaun Watson got paid too. Let's not forget. 
Yeah, well, it, not as much as Mahomes. <laughs> Nobody got paid as much as Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, obviously, this is our last show for the week, and so we're not going to be back on until Monday. And so let's talk about Sunday, right? I mean, we've got – I'm going to start off with – how about the Saints and the Bucks? I, I mean, obviously, that's what I'm waiting for, 425, baby. Um, I'm going to be working, but I'm probably going to be calling off. Uh, just a little quick shout out to my job. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's literally Christmas day for me. I can't wait. Uh, Mike Evans looks like he's going to be out with a hamstring injury. That's kind of upsetting. Uh, he, he ended the year on the IR with the hamstring, same hamstring. So I'm hoping that's not going to turn into a lingering problem here because I think he will be needed. Um, but, I think we win, and honestly, I think we win pretty handily. I think we win, I don't know, 20 – no, we'll go 31-14. All right. Now, the thing I noticed is I saw a picture on no, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is, of Tom Brady and Leonard Fournette. Mm-hmm. And Fournette had said something to the effect of, uh, I'm psyched to finally be playing with a good quarterback. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> I, don't. I, I just think it's so – and I know that – Brady is a very charming guy. Like we saw James Harrison went to New England and they were best friends within two days. Like it's just, I understand. I would probably want to hang out with Tom Brady too. It just, he seems like a cool dude, but I don't like shitting on your former team. And I think that unless you had some sort of personal beef with Minshew and like Blake Bortles, you know, did you really have a personal issue with them? Or I just think it's so crappy to come out and say, Oh, the guys I played with were crap before. I thought I was a good guy now. I agree. I mean, I don't love it. I mean, clearly there's something going on in Jacksonville, though. Everyone who's left has had not had kind words to say once they left. So I think it's more about that and the, and the culture and things like that more than it is this guy being an asshole. Uh, I could be wrong, and he could be an asshole, but, I mean, I hope not because he plays for my team. And, you know, honestly, I expect him to have a big role. I do. I know Bruce Arians just come out and said Rojo's my guy, but – I think by week three or four, we're going to see a heavy dose of Leonard Fournette. Now, of course, then I have to talk about the Patriots and the Dolphins are playing at one o'clock, right? And uh, very excited about this. Uh, Patriots are usually the only football game that I watch, although because of fantasy, I'll usually watch some other stuff. I definitely am super interested in the Bucs Saints because it's obviously being in New England. Yeah. But I think that the Patriots win this game pretty handily. I would say 27 to 10. I don't disagree there, honestly. Uh, from all accounts, Cam Newton's back to his 2015 form. Now, obviously, you're not going to expect anything less from the media and things coming out of New England, but they tend to be pretty rough on their players. So I would assume if he wasn't performing well, they would be coming out and saying it. You know, it's just been high praise. I, we'll see. I mean, if Cam Newton can stay healthy, they they may just win a couple games. They may just win a couple games. I, I them, that defense, I'm, I'm worried about. I'm not going to lie. Now, what I'm, would you say is more likely no, that Sony Michelle gets 100 yards rushing or Nikhil Harry gets 100 yards receiving? Probably the rushing because let's not forget, they got Byron Jones and Xavier Howard, Xavier Howard over there, who are both, I mean, I think easily they're the best cornerback tandem in the league. So – I think I trust the Dolphins' secondary more than I trust their interior defense. They've still got some young guys there. they got Christian Wilkins and, you know, a lot of young players who can can turn out to be great, but right now they're just unproven. Now, I don't love Sony Michelle, so I don't know. But I think if I'm a betting man, I'm going to bet the Sony Michelle just because I trust that pass defense more than I trust the rush defense. All right. And then, of course – You're not going to give me your take or what? Fuck. Just throw the question out and not even answer it. I like it. Yeah, because I really want to say Nikhil Harry because of our bet. But Yeah, of course. But you I, you, you agree with this, agree, with yeah, this specific I, instance. Yeah, you know. And, I mean, I don't know. I think Tredavious White signing obviously wasn't great for Nikhil Harry because um, he'll probably get that matchup because now, I mean, Nikhil Harry is definitely their, their outside guy. Um, but here's the thing is that, and we've talked about this a number of times, Josh McDaniels will figure out a way to get Nikhil Harry 100%. away from Tredavious White. Well, I don't know about that because Tredavious White does follow. Um, Tredavious White's one of the few corners who will follow. So, like, wherever you go, he's if that's his guy, he's going to follow. Now, I don't know if he's going to follow Nikhil Harry. 
because let's be real, Julian Edelman's still a threat. I mean, we're not just forgetting Julian Edelman exists. I just think Nikhil Harry's the scarier option at this point. We'll see, though. I'm so they're one of the few teams that I'm truly excited to see because I have no idea what to expect. Well, here's the kind of thing I predict because I've watched every Patriots game, you know, for the last few years and, and watching Josh McDaniel's offense and how he designs offenses. Here's what I predict. You know, Bill Belichick will come out and just do his regular offense, right? See what's happening. If Tredavious White is shadowing Nikhil Harry for whatever reason, um, and this is several games into the season, yeah. but I expect to see something like shotgun formation, running back Sony Michelle, running back Nikhil Harry, outside back Rex Burkhead. Oh, okay. I like it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. now, and yeah. now uh, they have to decide, does White come in as yeah. a linebacker, essentially? You know what I mean? So it kind of fucks Well, and then, too, what really hurts that is their ability to run the RPO and Cam Newton being a fucking power runner. Because if you bring Trey Day into the box as a linebacker, Cam Newton's going to plow over him like it's nothing. That's a terrible matchup for Buffalo. So you're right. Honestly, that makes a ton of sense. Um, so those are the games. And then the other 425 game, which I'm sure you'll be flipping back and forth between – is got to be the Cardinals and the 49ers. Oh, yeah. Um, just I mean, saying, I can't wait for that game. I know that both of us are humongous uh, Kyler Murray fans and just the idea to see him go against that defense. And I don't really love – I know they have Richard Sherman. I don't love the 49ers secondary. I, I do think that uh, he can shred that secondary uh, pretty good. I do too. And for how great Richard Sherman is, he's still almost pushing 46 – He's going to fall off the cliff sooner or later. I mean, cornerbacks, unfortunately, position that when you lose your elite athleticism, you kind of fall down the hill. Now, they play a very favorable system, obviously. He's only got to retreat and play in that cover three for the most part. So it suits his skill set really well, but I think they're going to eat him up. I think it's a bad matchup for, for San Francisco, honestly. We'll see because that defensive line is still super scary. But Kyler Murray's able to get out of the pocket, and then as soon as he gets that extra one or two seconds, they just have too many weapons at that point. Wait, you're not many. you're not going to be able to cover all of their weapons for as long as you know Kyler's going to be able to get time, and I think that's where they're really going to succeed. Well, and my whole thing is we talked uh, about going into the draft. We talked about Pittman being uh, a good high point guy, or you said that you know Nikhil Harry going to the draft is a very good high point. Guy. <laughs> I don't think anybody does it better than DeAndre Hopkins. Nobody on the planet does. Yeah. No. I mean, he's just phenomenal. Yeah. And so what do you do? You can put, you know, try to have Sherman and his cover three on that side, or I don't know, because then you've got Larry Fitzgerald, who just never drops a pass ever on the other side. And then Christian Kirk working out of the slot, who's going to be extremely dangerous this year, or maybe even outside. And then Larry Fitzgerald has played more in the slot as of recently. But yeah, I mean, I agree. That team's scary good, man. I, I love them. That's why we we both kind of have Kyler Murray's our dark horse MVP. We both think he's got a better than average shot to win it. And, you know, I, I can't wait to see it week one. And lost in how good that offense is, getting to see uh, Isaiah Simmons play some defense for the Cardinals. Yeah, for sure. Then Buda Baker, you know, just signed as, you know, one of the highest paid safeties as well. Uh, uh, you know, their defense can only go up because they were last in the league. So, you know, they can really only get better. And I assume they will get better. I mean, you can only assume that you're going to get better from last. But, yeah, I mean, I think they're going to be in for, for a rude awakening here. San Francisco is. Well, that will take us to our Infinity Five, which we missed out on last episode. And we do have a nice little video intro like we usually do for our Infinity Five. I hope you guys enjoy it because it's going to be better than the Infinity Five. I promise I threw away my list, and so I'm trying to remember who I picked for everybody. I've got my top three, and then after that, I'm struggling right now. So we'll, we'll pretend, but here's our video leading into the Infinity Five. <laughs> So our Infinity Five is Super Bowl halftime shows, what we would like to see. It's going to be really hard for either of us to come up with anything better than Michael Jackson. I mean, that's quick just- over under, how many buttholes did he look at from right after that? Oh, I don't know. At least two <laughs> underage buttholes after that. Okay. At least. <laughs> yeah, crapping on Michael Jackson. Jesus. I hate Michael Jackson. Really? I love Michael Jackson. Oh, he's the epitome of evil, and I'm really, really, really glad he's dead. 
right. I mean, did you not watch any of that stuff? Have you not heard any of the stories of what he did to those kids? And God, I, I've I've heard the accusations. Did. Unlike Adrian Peterson, he didn't plead guilty to anything. He pled not guilty every time. I mean, anything he's been charged. Everyone and, and, around him has essentially said the same story. When everyone calls you a duck and you look like a duck and you quack like a duck, you're a fucking duck, man. But not everybody said the same thing, and that's where I think Dave Chappelle you know, did the great bit about it where he talked about how Macaulay Culkin used to spend the night at Michael Jackson's house all the time. And Dave Chappelle was like, did you see Macaulay Culkin you know, in the late 90s? Like, that's the kid you want to fuck. You know? <laughs> and, he was, and Macaulay Culkin saying, you know, he never laid a finger on me or my brother. Cause they yeah, now Macaulay him. Culkin's a drug-addicted alcohol fiend who <laughs> that's, that's screams abuse as a child. Well, it's classic child star. Yeah, it's also classic child abuse, but that's – I mean it's a whole different topic. Fine. We'll go. We are talking about Super Bowl halftime shows. <laughs> you should have put the one where Janet Jackson's titty came out. I thought about it. That um, was fantastic. But then I was looking for like the best halftime shows. I mean Prince's halftime show was really good. Oh, it was uh, incredible. I mean if – spoiler alert, Prince Hologram is one of my choices. Really? Oh, interesting. So, again, I don't have my order. I threw my list out. So I'm going to try to remember some of the ones that I have. And one of the ones that we'll go with number five because I know who my top two are. So, I mean, my number five will go with uh, – you did like to do collaborations, right? Like a lot of like, oh, this artist plus this artist. Mm -hmm. And I went with kind of a British invasion theme here. And this is Ed Sheeran U2. Oh, okay. I don't hate it. I mean, U2's a stadium band. No, they Um, sure are. And uh, Ed Sheeran I actually saw at Foxborough Stadium. Um, his stadium tour, which, by the way, how crazy is this? Ed Sheeran, guitar, no band, anything else. Really? Just acoustic? And it, well, so he had, like, the little pedals that you step on for, like, the, yeah. the drums and the noises. But, yeah, no yeah. band whatsoever, just him and his guitar in a stadium. Oh, nice. That's incredible. I mean, I, he, I think Ed Sheeran's incredibly talented, so. Oh, he was so good. So good. Um, I mean, not better than the four Garth Brooks concerts I went to, but really good. (laughs) And I still love the scene. Have you seen the movie Yesterday? Mm -mm. I recommend it. So Yesterday, if you don't know, is kind of a movie about a guy gets hit by a bus. When he kind of wakes up, he's a musician. Oh, this is the Beatles movie, right? Yeah, the Beatles don't exist. Nobody knows any of the songs, and he knows all of them, right? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. So in the – in the very beginning, when he's kind of finding his niche and like he's singing all the Beatles songs for the first time, uh, Ed Sheeran comes over to his house, um, and it's funny because they're in the kitchen talking, and Ed's like, "I want you to come on tour with me, just open up for me and stuff like that." And the dad comes into the kitchen and he's like telling Ed Sheeran, he's "Like get out of the way, I'm trying to get a cabinet." He's like getting back <laughs> and he's making himself something to eat. And as he walks out, he turns around and he looks and he goes, "You know, you look like Ed Sheeran." <laughs> and uh, Ed Sheeran goes, "Yeah, I, I am Ed Sheeran." I get that a lot. <laughs> that goes, right? Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I love Ed Sheeran, actually. He does a lot of uh, good collabs, too, so I think that'd be a really good one. I just hate you two. So. Oh, really? Um, for my five, since I can't remember, we'll just go with the the hologram collab. Yeah, MJ okay. was definitely so, a weirdo. Yeah, and Ryan Lethal says Ed Sheeran is dope, which is true. He is. True statement. So my number five would be the uh, uh, Prince slash Tupac hologram collab. So who was it? Slash Tupac? Did I freeze? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah, the Prince slash Tupac hologram collab. Hmm. Interesting. They already have like a show like that in Vegas, and uh, I think it'd be pretty cool, especially to combine those two genres and things like that. I do think it would be cool. Uh, I think if Tupac were alive, which could he be, um, he could come up with some really cool raps with Prince music as the, yes. uh, the hook and whatnot. For I guess, sure. Yeah, but with both of them having passed before collaborating, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I love both the artists. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and obviously there's always that – when you have that collaboration, there's always a section where it's just one of them at one time and then they yeah. kind of both come on together at some point. Yeah. So – yeah, I mean, I'd love to see it. What, what Tupac songs would he, would he do? See, because you, 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 it's very like, which ones could you do? I think he could do um, uh, Mama because then that's kind of slow. And I think you could incorporate that with something Prince-ish. You know what I mean? And then spin it off into something princess or Prince-ish. But then, I, I mean, hit him up's my shit. So, I mean, but that's a little too vulgar. 
Well, I was going to say, like, there's some songs I love, love, love the song Can't See Me. Oh, yeah. Um, fantastic. That's, that's, but, yeah, so many F-bombs and N-bombs. Yeah, and that'd, go be issue. that'd be the issue with Tupac because there's just too much. That's probably going to be my issue with my number four, too. Um, you know, there's just too many kind of humps you'd have to get over. Now, so – because I was thinking California Love, you could do. Oh, California right? Love would be great, especially if it was in, you know, if it was the it was they were like hosting in San Diego or you know in something like in California, that'd be fantastic. Now, what about um, I have, have Holler if you hear me? Mm, I mean, I guess you could. It's a pump up yeah, you, kind of song. Yeah, it is kind of a pump up song, I guess. You know, the issue would be then what print songs could you do? Because you couldn't do too slow. You had to do too slow. Like, I mean, he could just essentially redo his fucking set list yeah. from the one he already performed. I would love, love, love to hear an original Tupac where Purple Rain is the hook. Right? Or something like yeah. that. Like, wouldn't that be incredible? Like, that would be yeah. so dope. Yeah. So, let's see. My fourth, I guess we'll go. And I really don't know if it's my fourth or not. Um, I had Imagine Dragons. Uh, with no collaboration, yeah. I just again, they're a stadium band, so they are yeah, a they, band. They, they're, they're, they've already done it. And it was awful. It was so bad. Well, they did the NBA All. Weren't they at the national championship? Oh, they were the NBA, NBA All Star halftime right. show, and it wasn't great because the indoors, first of all, so it's kind of it so bad. Yeah, it's not great. But they are a stadium band that would do really well in a stadium, and I like a lot of the music. I think when you go with natural and radioactive, yeah. and I mean the, the songs are just kind of cool songs. Get everybody involved. I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't hate it. I mean, I hate it, but you know, to each his own. <laughs> uh, I would do my next ones. I mean, I think Eminem's got to get on there. Uh, I would love to see Eminem on there. And then I'm a big Logic fan, so then and Eminem and Logic have a song together. So I'd love to see them do a collab and and get on there. And then you could have, you know, Logic do his stuff, and then Eminem do his stuff, and then together they do their collab. I think that would be incredible. So no, uh, no, like pop or rock kind of to break it up. No. Okay. No, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of that. I mean, my next ones, you'll see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So now we're getting to my top three, which I do remember. Um, so my top three. This is another collaboration, and this is one where when they did the Who, and I was like, "What the fuck are they doing with the Who?" Right? Or, or like uh, Rolling Stones, you know? Uh, which I'll touch on that later in one of my things. It's just old person music, and I'm like, let's get the stadium involved. Let's get people on their feet, like, screaming, going nuts, right? And I was like, when I think of football, and I think of me putting the helmet on and getting just ready to go kill somebody, right? ACDC, right? And, again, Shook Me All Night Long, Hell's Bell, so many good Hell's stadium Bell, songs. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then who are they going to collaborate with? Well, since kind of overlap with the lead singer, how about Guns N' Roses? No, that'd be fantastic. I mean, it would never happen. The jungle. It would never happen. Don't they hate each other? Uh, I don't know because the only other member of Guns N' Roses I know is Slash, and I know he did Velvet Revolver. Um, I thought they had bad beef because of the whole uh, lead singership, but I could be wrong. It could be. I mean, I know that his voice isn't the same as it was back in the day either. That's the other downside. But in my mind, I'm picturing Prime. No, that wasn't Axl Rose. Yeah, Axl Rose. That's it. Yeah. Prime Axl Rose singing like, "Welcome to the Jungle," um, you know, "Sweet Child back of Mine." Back. Yeah, "Back in Black." I mean, just it'd be awesome. That'd be incredible. You're right. I honestly, I'd tune in for that one. My number three is not a musical act. It's uh, it's gonna be David Blaine. Right. I want to see him do some crazy like stunt at halftime. Um, I think it'd be really cool and entertaining to see. I don't know what, you know what I mean? He'd have to come up with that. Like maybe if the, I don't know, the, I don't know, could escape a shark tank or something that you're padlocked into and you got a straight jacket on. That'd be dope. But there's got to be a lot of buildup because, again, it's like a 25, 30-minute show. So he's got to like do some sort of buildup to the actual event. Oh, yeah. I mean, it'd be it'd probably be multiple things. Oh, boom. We'll collab his magic show with the Travis Pastrana act and guys flipping and doing shit like that. All right, then, yeah, I can see that. And then maybe he like has to get off of like a maybe he's hung up like on a crane and he's got to escape before one of the bikes does a backflip and hits him. Interesting, right? Yeah, <laughs> I just like new different things. I hate seeing the same acts just over and over. 
I know initially when you pitched the idea of David Blaine, I, I didn't like it because I said he does a close-up magic, which you can't really do in a stadium, you know, even though it's up on the billboard or whatever. Um, so, but yeah, if you mixed it in with one big kind of dramatic David Copperfield event and then had the, the X Games stuff going on, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I think that'd be. I think that could be pretty cool. Now, my number two, and you're going to be surprised. This is my number two, but I got. Like I said my number one is one that I have been clamoring for for it's years. It's going to be Garth Brooks. What are we even waiting for? Yes, number two <laughs> is. Garth Brooks. Oh, wow. I thought Garth Brooks was one for sure. For sure, I didn't even think. I was like, it's Garth Brooks at one. No hands down. It is Garth Brooks, Justin Timberlake, Taylor Swift. Um, God, I hate so, Taylor Swift. Well, but she gives you that buffer she between does. pop and country. You know? no, I agree. And so I think that it, Garth Brooks by himself is, is amazing, but I didn't want to be like, hey, let's do Garth Brooks because – he is getting older, and I think that there are a lot of younger viewers who probably don't even know who Garth Brooks is, or they have preconceived notions of who he is, which, by the way, is Entertainer of the Year every single year, pretty much. Um, you know, the, it's the four best concerts I ever went to. God, and you love Garth Brooks. I love him. Dude. And so that's why I wanted to bring this up, too, to talk about a story, a Garth Brooks story. Of course. Not the true story. And what had happened was in 1996 is the first year that the AMAs had Entertainer of the Year, Performer of the Year. Garth Brooks won it the very first year that they had it. He was up against um, Hootie and the Blowfish, Green Day, TLC, and Boys the Men. And Garth Brooks won an Entertainer of the Year. And again, anyone who's seen him in concert understands why. But here's the thing. Garth Brooks, prior to the event, kind of called around and had his manager calling around and found out, like, who were the top album sales for the year and kind of found out that Hootie and the Blowfish cracked rear view, basically kept record stores in business that year in 1996. And Garth Brooks went up to the podium, set the, the thing down on the, the podium, and he said, you know, Hootie and the Blowfish are the ones who really deserve this. I can't wow. in good conscience accept this and walked off the stage. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, and so then did in 1990, album come out that year or something. No, he did, but he just felt like Hootie was the one that kind of really set the bar for everybody, and he's like, "I just can't accept this award; it's not mine." So nice. I guess Dick Clark said something to the effect of, "Like, well, if you ever do want it, we're going to keep it in storage." And he's like, "I'm never going to want it because I don't deserve it this year." Oh. Um, and then in 1997, the very following year, uh, he won it over Celine Dion, and he accepted it that year. Well, you, anything over Celine Dion's a victory. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, my number two is again not going to be a, a regular act. Uh, it, it's going to be the Cirque du Soleil. I'd like to see, see that. that. Yeah, I'd like to see that. And then maybe a musical act with it. Like, I mean, I hate her guts, but somebody kind of weird and edgy like Lady Gaga or, you know, something like that to come out with them and do some crazy performance while they're doing all kinds of crazy Cirque du Soleil shit. I think would be, I mean, I'd watch that. I'd be glued all to right. that. No, no, no. I, I got you. Forget Lady Gaga. I got you on this one. Okay. Cirque du Soleil, Pink Floyd. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. See? There you go. See, I knew you. See, but I'm, I'm trying to bridge the gap. Like you said, I'm trying to get younger acts into my Super Bowl shows. But it's so, like a weird – the Cirque du Soleil is kind of weird, different circus stuff. Weird. And I think that music goes perfect with yeah. – That's true. Stuff. I mean, Lady Gaga is pretty fucking weird. Let's not yeah. – so my number one, and, and you wrongly guessed it, but my number one, like I said, is one that I've thought about for over a decade because I brought up the Rolling Stones. When they had the Rolling Stones do the Super Bowl show, I don't know the last time I was so pissed about a musical act being on television. <laughs> the Who was bad. The Who was the worst one I've ever seen. Yeah, they were awesome. But I was, I was pissed about the Rolling Stones because do you remember which Super Bowl that was? Mm -mm. It was in Detroit. Okay. And in the city of Motown – yeah, you have a fucking British band as the halftime show. Yeah. Detroit has Detroit Rock City and Motown, and you had a fucking. I said you could have had Kiss. Kiss would have been so good there. For you sure, could have had you know. I mean, so many different bands. So I got the idea. I said, all right, you know who I want to see in Detroit if they ever do this in Detroit again. I'm sure they will. It's a dome, right? Yeah. I'm sure they could. They love dome stadiums. Kid Rock Eminem. Nice. Yeah. I would love that. I mean, I love Kid Rock, so <laughs> I would love that. That would be so dope. And plus, he knows how to, like, get a crowd going. Like, he really does know how to get shit going. I mean, they uh, know each other. Who's the Who's the country bumpkin Ted Nugent, too? That'd be fucking okay. dope. I know he's not from Detroit. Okay. But I thought he was. I could he be wrong. Be. I, I thought he was, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So that's why, that's why I threw it out there. I thought he was. But, I mean, that you're right. That'd be epic. That'd be so incredible. So who's your number one? Uh, I mean, is it a shocker here? 
here. It's Queen with Adam Lambert, man. I mean, it's got to be. I mean, their their live shows are. I mean, they're selling out. Every they're just the most epic live shows. Uh, Adam Lambert has you know kind of taken on the persona, uh, you know, and truly you know, embrace that role and just become that outspoken out front kind of guy. And I mean, it's just brilliant. Their live shows are incredible to watch. I would love to see that. I thought about that for one of my five, um, because I love queen. They're one of my favorite bands. And, but the thing that is so hard for me is I haven't watched, maybe I should go through YouTube and watch some queen live stuff. It's hard for me because I've watched like, you know, live at Wembley stadium in 86, yeah. you know, so, and live and, at Oh, and I mean, the performances, I feel like it's so hard to watch Freddie Mercury and then watch somebody else. I'm telling you, give Adam Lambert a chance. I promise to God, bro. He, it's, he's his own person, but yet also, he. I mean, I've watched this whole shit. I've watched so much shit on Queen, especially Queen and Adam Lambert. Um, and it, it, he just takes on the persona of Freddie without stepping on Freddie's toes and being his own person still. I mean, the live shows are incredible. YouTube wanted to check it out, man. It's totally worth it. All right, well, I'm going to do that. And again, thank, thank you, everybody, for watching the show on Facebook Live. We appreciate it. This episode will be available in about 30 minutes on iTunes. It takes a little bit longer for Spotify and Stitcher, but you can find it tomorrow. You can also go on to YouTube, watch the video again if you missed any part of it and you want to catch all the visuals. And obviously, visit the website, www.infinitysportspodcast.com. Pretty straightforward. It gives you links to all of the social media. It gives you links to the YouTube. And you can visit the store, buy some of the merchandise. My sister just got her 12 is greater than nine t-shirt i've got my hoodie and of course you've got the sully collection uh, gold jacket green jacket who gives a shit in fact i actually want to have a contest we're going to think of a contest where i want some fans to send in pictures of them wearing some of the apparel oh, that'd and, be we'll, yeah. and we'll have some sort of like a gift card or something I, I gotta think of what i want it to be exactly but i think something like that yeah that'd be really cool that's a great idea and other than that, I got, I got nothing. Again, thanks, everybody. And uh, I know that uh, Sully threw it to Kenny last week, so I'm going to say, uh, hey, Kenny, uh, where you at? <laughs>